Welcome to VM Blog's coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2024. Today, I have the pleasure of having Roman Habrenko, who's the co founder of Victoria Metrics. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Maybe you can start by telling us a little bit about Victoria Metrics and what do you guys do? Yeah, so Victoria Metrics is a company behind open source project with the same name called Victoria Metrics. And uh, the project itself is was based on the time series database uh, for storing metrics, like similar to what Prometheus does, but at different scale, at bigger scale, can be horizontally scaled. Uh, and initially, we created it to be uh, to enhance Prometheus. But uh, after some time, when we've seen the interest in the product, the open source project evolved into like a full set of monitoring tools. So now we have a rich ecosystem for monitoring. We have agents for collecting metrics and delivering them, routing metrics, doing all this stuff. We have alerting mechanism. We have anomaly detection. We have our own UIs. We have Kubernetes operator, Helm charts, all this stuff. So basically, if you would like to monitor your applications or Kubernetes or whatever systems you have that expose metrics, Victoria Metrics works really, really good at low scale, at huge scale, and it shows it's super well uh, in terms of simplicity, how you run it, maintainability, and cost efficiency. In the same time, it uh, maintains the compatibility with uh, popular projects like Prometheus, so you can write Prome or PromQL expressions. To get your data from Victoria Metrics, you can use uh, similar or even the same configuration um, formats for scraping data, for pushing data. It supports also not only scraping data uh, from targets, but also it receives uh, direct writes. So push me method, push methodology supported. So yeah, it supports many, many features right now. And you, you, you kind of talked about it, but if you could explore a little bit about how Victoria Metrics fits within the ecosystem uh, that we're here to talk about, you know, at the KubeCon Cloud Native Con event. Yeah, so it fits um, pretty, pretty good. If you run Kubernetes at your job or uh, for your projects, basically, Victoria Metrics is compatible with uh, all the metrics that uh, Kubernetes exposes. It is compatible with Kubernetes service discovery. So you can deploy Victoria Metrics components to collect all those metrics automatically to display them. Uh, our Kubernetes operator will automatically bring up uh, Victor Metrics cluster. You can scale that cluster to like billions of unique series, and it would work pretty well. And you also can have, of course, alerting with the same uh, with the same format as you can do right now with Prometheus alerting for Kubernetes. You can use the same files, the same alerts with Victor Metrics, but you just get this scaling and resource efficiency out of the box. And as a KubeCon uh, attendee, what are some of the specific problems that your company solves for them? And what are some of the specific use cases for, for your software? Yeah, uh, so those problems are pretty high level and they may not sound like, uh, like something interesting, but we put a lot of efforts into making Victor metrics simple to use. So simplicity means easier maintainability, it means when you go to a really huge scale for, for your metrics, like by huge scale, again, I, I'm mentioning like billions of unique time series uh, per last hour, uh, let's say, uh, it means that you don't need like a department or team to maintain this system. It, it is pretty stable, it is reliable, and it's easier to understand what is happening inside. And this maintainability and simplicity is appreciated mostly at this huge scale when you have a lot of critical system dependent on, on your monitoring. So this is the main problems that we solve. If you have a lot of metrics uh, that you need to collect, process, and make, and have a reliable alerting, Victoria Metrics is a good. Now you gave a really good overview of the company. If you could maybe dive a little bit deeper into the actual technology uh, and maybe talk about what makes it unique or differentiated in the market? Yeah, <clears throat> so as mostly ever since it was created for Kubernetes, uh, Victoria Metrics is written in Go. 
uh, from the very beginning. We do not uh, actually use any uh, other technologies except of like basic stuff like that standard compressor or whatever. Uh, most of, I would say, all of uh, the components are written from scratch in Victoria metrics. We don't rely on any other third party databases. Uh, so this, this approach to have specifically tailored components for solving modern problems, not like every problem in the world, but modern problems connected with Kubernetes makes Victoria metrics lighter and easier to maintain and also faster development pace because we control everything that we use inside the project. We, we do not depend on other libraries. We can go pretty fast. We can bring changes and optimizations pretty fast without waiting for uh, other projects to keep up. So yeah, I, I think that what makes us unique here. Now, what are some of the uh, biggest challenges that your users have come across um, and how, does, how do you guys solve those problems? Yeah, um, I touched this earlier, but the main problems that I see right now in, in Kubernetes monitoring is uh, amount of data, the amount of telemetry that you need to collect. Because of the deployment approach in Kubernetes, where, you, um, where companies used to deploy their applications multiple times a day, everything that they deploy have this unique pod name pod label. And this creates the new challenge for modern time series databases. It creates a churn rate challenge. And this is one of the reasons why, for, for example, Prometheus changed the version from first to the second, like Prometheus 2.0 was created to address the specific issue with churn rate in Kubernetes. But uh, with time, Kubernetes becomes complex. With time, people start to run more and more components inside the Kubernetes amount of metrics that Kubernetes exposes also uh, increases a lot. And the churn rate problem, it, it didn't disappear. So far, no solution solved it. Uh, I mean, no other database uh, solved churn rate problem. So uh, currently, the main obstacle the user facing is to have something efficient enough for their hardware, hardware and their resources to keep up with this load with this amount of telemetry they need to collect and also run other thing rules on. This is the main challenge. And after that, if you're even able to deal with the load that you have in your Kubernetes cluster and you can like make a capacity planning for like three years uh, in the future. And the other problem, common problem for everyone is how to maintain this system, how you can be sure that it is reliable and it will not uh, fall apart in the most critical moment. So these are two main things that uh, you people usually try to solve. They try to solve them with different uh, solutions. And Victor metrics is one of the things that people sometimes come up, uh, end up with. I mean, they find in like how to solve cardinality problem. And then you have in the Google search, you have some uh, sometimes here's databases that <laughs> claims that they, they can solve this problem. Then users run benchmarks, try it on, on their workload. They see how fast they work, how reliable they work, how many resources they consume and make a choice to use one of one or another. And Victoria metrics tend to, to win in such competition pretty, uh, frequently. Now, a lot of companies, they, uh, make announcements leading up to uh up to kubecon has victoria metrics made any recent announcements that you'll be showcasing at the event and can you talk about those yeah so we'll be making an announcement on the event and <clears throat> if you uh it will be published later so i will not spoil it uh, right now uh but a part of that uh recently we made uh, another announcement about uh, our cloud offering so uh Victoria Metrics already proved itself as a good open source project, and many people run it for uh, real production use cases. But some people don't want to bother even with that. They want to simplify the monitoring routine as much as possible, so they don't don't want to run applic don't don't want to run components, don't want to update them manually, don't want to configure them manually. For such customers, we have uh, Victoria Metrics Cloud offering where we run Victoria Metrics 
for you. And we just give you a nice user interface where you can get access for writing, for reading, for basic alerting, uh, et cetera. And yeah, so I, I encourage everyone, if you like Victoria metrics or you're just looking for a database, time series database for your telemetry, please check Victoria metrics cloud. It's uh, one of the cheapest options. I mean, cost efficient options that you can find in, in the cloud. And it, it is powered by Victoria metrics enterprise. Now, as we're reaching the, the end of the year, um, people are starting to think about, you know, the upcoming year, what are some of the trends or things that your company is seeing in the marketplace that might be driving some of your product features in the coming year? Yeah, so <clears throat> I think everyone knows that the common uh, the new trend is AI, and uh, all of the thoughts. I, I I bet that half of the talks on the KubeCon will be about AI or integrating AI in different aspects of the uh, Kubernetes or tools created for Kubernetes. So and and in monitoring, which is also very crucial, and currently monitoring has to manage like uh, tons of data and mere human just can't get into all of that so the current trend trend in monitoring is that maybe ai can solve that maybe ai can see anomalies and detect those anomalies in advance without uh making human to look on the dark words or a human to write alerting rules on their own so this mm -hmm. is i i think that there's something new uh, a new black uh, which everyone will be obsessed in the new year and if this will work out well, I, I would be really glad because <laughs> because then machines will solve uh, another one problem for for everyone. So right. yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Well, Roman, this has uh, been great information about Victoria Metrics. We really appreciate you taking time to join us on VM Blog's coverage of KubeCon. Before we let you go, uh, where can folks go? Obviously, uh, you know we invite everyone to come to your booth and learn more. But if if you're watching this video and you can't attend KubeCon, where else can folks go if they want to learn more about the company, the technology, and the things you talked about today? Sure, so we try to uh, very carefully uh, to maintain our documentation. You can visit docsvictorymetrics.com uh, and it is updated, the documentation updated like every day, multiple times. We try to keep it consistent. If you're an engineer and you want to learn Fast uh, about Victoria Metrics. Just read the docs and understand how to quick start. Uh, that's the best resource. If you like more visual uh, person and you want to hear about Victoria Metrics, uh, listen for other people case studies. We have a plenty of videos and talks related to Victoria Metrics or about Go or about monitoring on the YouTube. Just Google Victoria Metrics and and you will find a bunch. And also, if you are interested in the community of Victoria Metrics or what. Uh, our plans, roadmaps, or talk to uh, maintainers. We have a quarterly meetups happening every three months. They're happening on YouTube, so everyone can join, can ask a question. We have AMA sessions in the end of this uh, uh, on, in the end of this meetup. So I encourage everyone: if you have any questions, please come and ask them. Great. Well, thanks again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you at your booth. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. And one last thing, I guess uh, your booth number is R17. So if you're at the show, go check out the booth R17. Mm -hmm.